Ada is named in the memory of Ada Lovelace, the first known female programmer. She's a political scientist and is fascinated by the two contradictory trends of the net. The internet is both a liberation technology and a repression technology. It is worrying that governments worldwide request to block access to the internet. We follow Ada as she wants to understand how such shutdowns can take place. When we started working on the Telecommunications Ownership and Internet Shutdown project, Tina Freiburg, Lisa Garbe and myself, Veronique Vav, we really wanted to do something very practical. So straight away, we thought about how we could bring our research closer to society. Our work is very practical. It's also vi very visual. If you think of it, what we talk about is contemporary. It's exactly now, what's happening now, shutdowns in the world, happening in times of elections. We wanted to bring that closer to the society so that we, we don't miss the point of having an impact with our research. So we decided to work with illustrations, having a, a pilot project, so something that was maybe available online. And that's why we decided to work with the very talented Swiss illustrator, Pia Valère. And Pia Valère was key to the success of this project because she really pushed us towards having a narration that would work, something where people can really relate and can really understand what's going on in the research and in the project. That's how we developed four to five stories that you can find online on the website. And that's how we decided to, to develop the character of Ada. And Ada, she's the female researcher and she represents a little bit um, our team of three women researchers, Tina, Lisa and myself. In the first story, we inform about telecommunications infrastructure. The inner workings of internet are often unknown to the community. Not many people understand how the internet works, even if most of us are daily users. Did you know that the internet is built on an actual physical network that spans over the whole world and is called the internet backbone? And it is owned by telecommunications companies, also called internet service providers, or ISP. In the second story, we present Daniel, Ada's friend, a Ugandan lawyer fighting for digital rights. Through Daniel's eyes, Ada understands the differences in the way internet service providers, ISPs, operate the internet infrastructure worldwide. The third story is key to our work. Here, we show how an internet shutdown can take place and how it feels for insiders and outsiders. We take our inspiration from several shutdowns that took place in Uganda in 2016 and more recently. Specifically, we portray an example of how a shutdown can take place with a clear line of command going from the government representatives to the ISP manager and finally to the IP engineer who implements the required shutdown. We follow Ada as she listens to the reasons given by the government to request an internet shutdown in the midst of national elections. Ada is angry by flawed excuses. Her friend Daniel will soon be back online. He's also fuming and explains how puzzled he is that such shutdowns can take place. The impact on the society is huge. In this last story, we focus on telecommunications operators, many of whom have their headquarters in European countries and experience contradicting laws and practices when operating abroad. Do ISPs care about internet shutdowns? What do they do about it? Ada feels puzzled about what she hears. She writes her notes and tries to make sense of everything she's learned. But for now, it's your turn to think. What can we do to ensure internet access in moments of political uncertainty? And how to make operations more accountable to digital freedom? Let's meet on www dot free my internet dot info to continue this conversation.